today we've got more thunderstorms in the northeast. Damaging winds are going to be the now we could see a repeat of those strong gusty winds again today. And when you combine that with saturated soil, it's just a recipe for disaster. Here's meteorologist Alex Wallace. No, no, me neither. No. All right, but it was a great full moon to Southeast Asia now. Now here we have more heavy rain that could hamper the search for survivors of a weekend disaster. there. Uh, that'll be dinner. Now you want something cool to eat to drink with the kind of heat that we've got building. Look at these temperatures today. 94 in Pittsburgh and DC and Knoxville or uh, Louisville. I should say Knoxville. You'd be in the low 90s. We continue our stretch of not just heat, but the high humidity comes with it. Dew points in the 70s all the way up to Louisville. Now Pittsburgh, we've got dew points in the 50s. That's not that bad. I know it's hot, but it's not as bad as some of the heat some other spots are seeing. So the heat index won't be as bad in Pittsburgh. What you see is what you get. Look at Louisville, though. Since you've got dew points in the 70s in Lexington, we feel it as well. Evansville, we feel it. It's going to be feeling like over 100. Jordan. DC at 102. So you know what? You guys are going to need to keep a. You are right? at the whim of the wind. The whim of the wind. Yes. And you just say, I respect them. They look beautiful in the air. Your closest thing They're... to being a cloud right there. That's true. Welcome back, everyone, to AMHQ uh, early. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. And I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. Before you head out the door, let's get a check on the weather going on around the nation. Big talker this week is going to be the tropical energy coming in off the yes. Gulf. Yes. I know your eyes are probably going to that yes. or that, yes. but this is actually the right. little energy that we're looking at. That's right. Yeah. And so this is going to uh, continue to. Well, we're we're going to keep an eye on it for the next several days. It's actually working its way onshore right now. We'll continue to see rainfall mm -hmm. for the south all day today and then eventually go into the uh, Atlantic. Another round of thunderstorms in the northeast today. Not just the mid-Atlantic. We expand. We see parts of Pennsylvania, the upstate New York, uh, even New York City. Chances some big boomers. That's right. And then the wind threat is going to be sticking around Minneapolis today, but we also have some hail threat, mm -hmm. and that's going to be closer to yeah. Rapid City on the west There's side. There's even a chance some storms could spin and tornadoes form, so we'll watch for that. Gotta Meanwhile, be careful. the rain. Yeah. Hey, we also have some thunderstorms to start your morning. Good morning to you. Getting a little extra wake-up call here right along I-90 and south of that in Minnesota. This is where we've had heavy rain and a lot of thunder and lightning. And the only warning we have across the country right now is a flash flood warning. Saw so the community of Kenneth, you got five inches of rain. That was estimated by Doppler radar. And so that little pocket is where we have that flash flood concern at the moment, about two hour uh, time frame for that warning. Then we go to the risk of storms later today from Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way back into portions of Montana and Wyoming. We've got the chance of storms. Now there's some different risks across this area. Here to the east, I think you're gonna see mainly damaging winds. We have some very strong wind energy right across this area that's going to enhance the wind threat but there's also the risk for some turning of the winds here across Montana Wyoming and then into South Dakota we've got a three on the Torcon across the area today not too far from Rapid City in that beware of these thunderstorms as they start popping I know this is time of year people are uh, you know out at their national parks at the state parks and doing some exploring thunderstorms go into the afternoon and they really could pack a punch so watching for severe weather chances I-94 90 also if you're traveling out there today um, maybe on 35 that would be another spot to watch for severe weather Steph, it is about half past the hour and we have an update for you with major thunderstorms that will light up your morning in the southeast and then continue into the evening like this one that we saw in Apopka Florida on Sunday I mean, we had just under an inch of rain falling but man was it gusty look at this we had the gust at times reaching over 10 to 15 miles per hour and higher I mean that was the official report but you can see those trees bending in the wind Tropical downpours across the south again today. Scenes just like this will play out time and time again, Steph. And what's one of the things causing it? Well, one thing that's causing it is our Invest 98L. What am I talking about? Well, you're going to see a little swirl. We're going to start this over. Watch right here. You see this swirl right here? That little swirl is what we're focused on. Because even though it's going to stay over land the next couple of days, as we head under a Wednesday, Thursday, 
it looks like it'll be able to tap into some of that water. And basically, it's like giving candy to a baby, right? That's the equivalent to these systems. 40% chance here of development. But again, as I mentioned, the next couple of days over land. But once it hits this water, does it just explode? We've had very warm water temperatures. Right now, the models kind of have it basically straddling the coast. So will it be tropical? Would it be subtropical? Will it just be a low pressure? Will they name this? Faye is our next name system. It is something we have to watch very closely. But what it's going to do over the next couple of days is because we have this energy, it is going to bring rain and it's going to bring thunderstorms for us in the south. And we get that daytime heating. That's when everything enhances. But regardless, we still have it just swirling around. Even as we head into those overnight hours, you still get some of those clouds and some of those showers. Some of these are going to be very heavy downpours, though. All right. Unfortunately, at the beach, I know a lot of people were there last week. If you're waiting for all the crowds to die down, uh, it's still going to be wet there. So here into the Atlanta metro, into the evening hours, you're going to get that rain, potentially some very, very heavy downpours flooding downpours uh, potentially as well. It lasts into the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning. So this is where all eyes will be because it literally is going to affect you up the entire I-95 corridor once it gets out of the southeast. Wednesday, more of the same. As we head into Thursday, this is when it's going to be closer to the coast here off the Carolinas, and it will start to make its move. New Orleans, you're going to get those clouds in the showers. At least that keeps the temperature down. Because look at Thursday. That's when things really heat up. You get rid of the uh, clouds and the rain, and you get that just sunshine. Tampa, you'll get showers and thunderstorms, and our temperatures will hold, hold right around uh, the 80s. Jen. All right, then the heat. I mean, we have so much in the way of temperatures soaring across parts of the country. Let's take a look at some of the numbers out there, all the way up to the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Northeast. Of course, we've been feeling that heat. Big ridge of high pressure. Our jet stream is far north, and you know, that's what you expect for the summertime, but it's a strong ridge, and that's driving up our numbers. So we've got 160 million people that are feeling the heat today. We're going to be dealing with the heat advisories in places like Philadelphia, you know, the entire region, actually from Delaware to Jersey. Uh, you've got those heat advisories posted here and look at the numbers in Philadelphia. You know, it's not just about the temperature. It has to do with the temperature and the dew point. And when you put them together into the heat index equation, it's going to feel like the upper 90s right through the entire afternoon. I mean, look at that. Sometime at about lunchtime, it goes up there and just stays all afternoon. And that's why those heat advisories are up. All right, let's talk tomorrow. And you know, Philly, I don't want to wish an east wind on anyone because I always say there's nothing good about an east wind. But that would help us out. That's why Boston, you're not as hot because you have that east wind. But everyone else, uh, we're getting just the, the relentless south wind. It's going to keep us warm, staying above average, not just this week, but the extended period expecting above average temperatures. Now, Chicago, we get a slight break coming our way at the end of the weekend. And when I say break, I mean 86 degrees. That's our break. Otherwise, our numbers are going to be up. We are in the 90s all week long, if not, not even just 90s. How about upper 90s, 96 degrees? So um, our 86 comes this weekend and then we're right back into the 90s again as we get right into the extended period all the way until the 17th of July is where this forecast goes to. Let's look at Pittsburgh. We've got the heat as well. Temperatures in the 90s again today. We'll keep it going into tomorrow and all the way through the end of the work week. The weekend is our break, which is just average. And then we'll watch that continue right back up into the 90s by the middle of the month. Now, one spot that, of course, it really gets hot is inside our vehicle. So let's look at our scorching car scale. We're today in places like St. Morning, the 4th of July fireworks may be over, but another Mother Nature is still bringing a light show across the southeast. Look at all of that lightning, showers and thunderstorms are going to be sticking around really through the bulk of the week through, you know, Thursday in the south, and then it goes all the way up the east coast. So if you live in the mid-Atlantic, if you live in the northeast, you are going to feel the effects of this system. So there it is. I know it doesn't look so impressive on the satellite. On radar, however, you can see the little spin. Uh, that's what we're focused on. It is on shore, all right? And so, of course, in order for this to really gain uh, momentum and gain intensity, it needs to um, be over the water. So we'll watch that. But here's a look. Watch this little spin right here. Do you see it? You see that spin, that counterclockwise spin? We'll start it again. There it is. That's why you see it, Jen. Jen's like, I see it, I see it. Do you see it at home? There, okay, there's a closer look at it. All right, so it looks like we have kind of an eye wall and an eye, right? But you can see that whole circulation. One more time, I'll show it to you here. There it is, moving inland. Now, again, to be over water is where it would be ideal. There's an even closer look. 
and you see that we really have kind of, I'm not gonna say an eye, but we do have a center of circulation with this little spin in the atmosphere. Now, here's a look at the very latest 40% chance of development. Now, a lot has to happen here and it is going to be lingering around on shore before it moves back offshore. And then it kind of looks like it's gonna straddle the coast. So the next name system, by the way, is Fay. So keep that in mind. Will this be tropical? Will it be subtropical? Will they just call it a low? Well, here's the energy from it. You see the bulk of the week, it kind of stays on shore. And then as we head later in the week, midweek, we're going to see it on Wednesday, getting back over that very warm water for us here. And then it really just straddles the coast all the way into the Northeast. Look, by Saturday, we're still dealing with this and we're dealing with the moisture with it. So this is what we're gonna keep a very close eye on. Again, it's going to be affecting us in the Southeast just day after day. That moisture is going to continue to uh, go up the coast and we could see heavy rain and potentially flooding. Where we are going to see the biggest storms and the strongest storms and actually the most severe storms. We want to show you what we saw yesterday. All right, heavy rain leading to this. You can see some uh, water here flooding the roadways. An inch and a quarter fell in just 40 minutes. That's tremendous. Good news is, as you saw, that truck really kind of backed up and decided not to go in uh, to that water. Of course, National Weather Service uh, says turn around and don't drown. So where are we going to see more storms like that? That's the big question, right? Well, first, I want to show you what happened yesterday, because what's interesting is at the airport, we didn't get any rain reported. All that heavy stuff was on the east side of town. You see it really blowing up there, right? On the east loop there on uh, 694. That's where we saw the heaviest showers. And so that's why forecasting is so fun yet so frustrating. Because unless you have, you know, a nice blob like this going through, when you're talking about those scattered storms, it's like the east side of town gets, you know, crushed while the west side of town or south side of town gets nothing. So today, where will we see the storms? Well, they're going to extend from Miles City all the way into Wisconsin, even to the UP of Michigan. And here's the thing about the storms. We're going to see these little systems basically come right along the border of Canada and the U.S. for the week. So, you know, yes, we do have some winds. Are we going to see this huge outbreak? No. But if we do have a tornado, uh, it is going to be here on the border of Montana and Wyoming. That's where we have the best bet and also into South Dakota. As we go through the day, what does it look like? Well, you see our first block of rain makes its way in blob. That's a very technical term, by the way, uh, through Minnesota on into Wisconsin. Perfectly. Say that again. It works perfectly. Right. I mean, that's what it is, right? And then look at these little cells starting to fire up. Those are the ones that we have to worry about that could be tornadic, could pump out the hail, could pump out the gusty winds. And then as we head into tomorrow and really, Jen, through the week, it's just that northern tier. And eventually one of these troughs will pick up our little tropical entity from the south. But Minneapolis, Jen, it's going to be a hot one when you have the sun, the clouds and rain give us relief. Yeah, that's the only time you get a break. Our with the South first, with all the wet that we're dealing with. This is just the last seven days. Now, this time of year, you know, on average, you're getting four or five inches of rain for the entire month. We've seen that in some places in just the last week. That just tells you how bad it is. Now, as we look at our departure from average, this is just 2020. This is not even taking into consideration the winter, which was outrageously wet as well. I mean, where you have the orange, it's like we need another color table on this because that is 16 plus inches and so many places have that, right? But we can go into detail. We can show you who's seen the 20 plus inches above average. So this is ranking them. Greenville, South Carolina, look at that. Almost 21 and a half inches. Alabama, you're in the 20 inch club as well. Muscle Shoals, you're just barely there. Jackson, Mississippi, you're in the 16 inch club. While Tupelo is in the 15, almost 16 inch club. It's just incredible. So if we got no more rain, for the rest of the year, when would we be back to average? Isn't that a cool game? Something fun to think about? So here in Greenville, we've seen 21 and a half inches. If we got no more rain, it would be December 17th when we were back to average. How wild is that? And we have a few more cities here. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama, December 4th. If we stopped all of rain, that's when we'd be back to average. You can see November and then October for Little Rock, Arkansas and Atlanta, Georgia. So that's how much we've seen. And unfortunately, Jen, there is no stop in the rain here in the south. I know, but just what we are dealing with, because there is a lot going on. We have a couple systems in the East Pack. And remember what an invest means, OK? That's when they're basically taking a closer look at the system. And L means for Atlantic. 
E means for East Pack, and it goes from 90 to 98. Once you hit 98, they just start with 90 again, never thinking that you're going to have eight invests at one time, right? So uh, let's have a look. We'll go through the different systems here. We're going to start with Edward, and this one is racing off. I mean, look at this thing. Right now, it's moving at 36 miles an hour. That's racing off, right? So this is something that is going to be making its way over into uh, Europe and nothing that we're going to have to worry too much about here in the lower 48. However, this over the next five days has a 40% chance of developing. So what's going to happen is over the next couple of days, it's going to stay inland. But as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, it's going to be straddling the coast and has the potential to dip into some of that nice, warm uh, water. Now, here is the center of circulation, this little spin that we've been following. How crazy is that? We followed this all the way from the Gulf here into the uh, Panhandle of Florida. There's I-10 for you, and there's your center of circulation. I mean, the fact that this is already trying, and even though it's over land, I mean, it's just remarkable, isn't it? So here is it. There's Dothan, Alabama for you and uh, Albany, Georgia. So it's a uh, crossing over the border there of Georgia and Florida right now. So here is our system, just about right here. And now watch this low pressure really just continue to try to develop. You look at these isobars. When the isobars are fully connected, making a round circle, that's where you have that significant low pressure. And we're expecting that here. Look as we head into Wednesday afternoon. Again, once it is able to tap into some of that Atlantic, you know, water, that's when it could really rev up. By the way, Faye is the name of the uh, next system, but it does straddle the entire coast. Look at Friday afternoon heading up into the mid-Atlantic. So if you live along the I-95 corridor, you could be affected by this, even if it's just clouds and showers or maybe a little bit more. It's 2020 after all. So, you know, this thing really could uh, crank if it wanted to. So there is where we're expecting that development over the next five days. And, you know, this is the area where we typically do look for development, especially closer to home for July when you have these fronts when you have these systems they can really spin stuff up this one here doesn't really look like it has a great chance for development there are the uh, lesser antilles in south america but of course we'll keep a close eye on this system and that development over the next five days is just it's not really um something that we're too worried about right now. Off in the East Pack here, we do have a system that has a good chance for development, 90% chance of development and over the next five days thankfully it will be going out to sea. Tevin. All right well every morning